So today I've got a very <laughs> special guest with me, my wife, Hello. Heidi. Some of you thought she didn't exist, but here she is. And we're going to go for a stroll around the streets of Ramsgate, the town of Ramsgate, the port of Ramsgate, home to Van Gogh, once where Mark spent some time and all sorts of other things as well that we're going to discover with the inexpert aid of my sister who is going to very <laughs> inexpertly guide us. It's a world of wonders down here in Ramsgate. So we're partly being shown around the streets of Ramsgate by my sister who lives here and so uh, she's going to show us a few places. A few, I've been down here quite a lot actually to be honest with you. I first came down here uh, in 2009 when I was making my documentary about the wonderful artist Bob and Roberta Smith uh, who has a big studio down here and I came down here a number of times with Bob and I've been down here a number of times with Bob over the years and I was down here uh, for his book launch the other night his book You Are an Artist which is a fantastic book which I highly recommend and we launched that book in a very socially distanced way at Bob's studio so for those of you who don't know, Ramsgate is a town in Kent on the Isle of Thanet, which Cathy told me this morning was once actually an isle. It was cut off by the sea, rising sea levels 8,000 years ago. It's the only royal harbour in the country, apparently. It's a really fascinating place, Ramsgate. You can sort of see the phases of its previous life. Now it's kind of become a home to um, people moving down from London. A lot of people have moved from London to Ramsgate recently and I've got a feeling a lot more will be moving down in the coming years. Here's a real uh, landmark of Ramsgate. It's Bob and Roberta Smith's van. Well, you can see, vote, vote Bob for more art, it says, when Bob ran for Parliament against Michael Gove. And that's something that's recounted in his book and actually went down to Surrey Heath with him when he campaigned in the general election 2015 and we did a psychogeographic derive. Art makes people powerful. Art gives a voice to the voiceless. I like Frida Kahlo. All schools should be art schools. Kathy's just started talking about tunnels, which has obviously caught my interest. Go on, this is my sister Kathy, by the way. In Ellington Park, which is just at the top of that hill, there are tunnels. There's two entrances, two sets of tunnels that link up and they go under the road all the way down through the town centre and end up where they built a massive underground tunnel for the residents of Ramsgate during the Second World War anticipating obviously more intensive bombing because they'd already been intensively bombed here during the Second mm. World War. So they created these tunnels which included a hospital, um, school and sleeping quarters for the residents, residents to live there for up to four years if need be. Mm. And these tunnels still exist this day and they've just been granted some money, heritage lottery money for Ellington Park and they're revealing these entrances to the tunnels. What are they used for now? Are they used for anything? No, you can still walk through them. They've oh. closed up, but they, they still exist. Wow. Yeah, and it's not just straight down. It's They, they gravitate off to the left, along the west uh, east cliff. Um, yeah. The not-so-secret tunnels of Ramsgate. There's loads of grand old Victorian houses in Ramsgate. And we're going to walk past this one here. I'm sure you can imagine Ramsgate was an important uh, naval port at one point in the past, particularly during the Napoleonic Wars. Cathy was telling me the Duke of Wellington made a lot of his plans in a pub down here. What's the name of the pub, Cat? The Falstaff Arms. Falstaff Arms, yeah. This is a pretty amazing terrace here. This is Chapel Place. Actually, this is the other side of that beautiful thatched cottage. Isn't it gorgeous? This is uh, Vale Square. Vale Square is really lovely. It's kind of like the, the posh part of Ramsgate, if you like. Wonderful record shop over there. I think it's called Vinyl Head Records. It's kind of a, quite a good music scene down in Ramsgate, actually. Is it Addington Street? 
I think this is probably like my favourite little street in Ramsgate. There's the uh, Queen Charlotte pub down there. There's also the, uh, the studio of the great artist Bob and Roberta Smith. It's just off of Adams Street. So maybe we'll go and knock on his door, see if he's in. So I started making uh, a documentary about Bob in 2009 and one of the first things we shot was in his studio down here in Ramsgate. The film's called Make Your Own Damn Art. You can watch it here on the channel. We actually had a screening at the wonderful Regent Street Cinema uh, at the end of 2019, which is a really wonderful event. So we'll knock on Bob's studio door. He might be in, he may not be in. It's the kind of place around to go, it is. Crazy things like this can happen. Oh, the door's opening. Oh my God. <laughs> it's the artist Bob Roberta Smith. What's he doing in this old garage in Ramsgate? John Rogers. <laughs> How are you doing, Bob? So this is, your, this, is the, this is the Museum of Bob. <laughs> it's the Library of Bob. The Library of Bob. This? Is this what you're working on at the moment, Bob? Yeah. Can we show this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, what, and what is this? So I've been uh, interviewing people on the Thamesmead estate, and they've been telling me their stories, and I've been sign writing them. And, but then I've also made some, you know, more conventional paintings of, of them. And, and they relate to different things during the lockdown. So that one was really early on during the lockdown. There was a, there was a pink moon, and I thought, well, that, the lockdown won't go on forever, and the pink moon will be the iconic symbol of the lockdown, but everybody's forgotten about the pink moon. <laughs> it's been superseded by lots of other <laughs> strange things going on. And then this is an image of uh, wildlife um, uh, taking over Thamesmead near the health centre. So that's really what I've been doing, doing us producing loads of radio, which we're making now, John. On, <laughs> Everything's on recorded, isn't it? <laughs> it's on Resonance <laughs> FM. Going to... Have you got the book there, Bob, that you can, yes. you can quickly plug the book? Yeah. 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 Well, so that's the book, yeah. Here it is. You are an artist. Now, buy my cereal. Buy it there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got things to do in it. But it's also got a serious essay running through it about, you know, the motivations of artists and... Why art is your human right. And you did all the photography in it. And there's a bit about our journey to Surrey Heath, Camberley, wasn't it? We I, I passed the van, so the van's in the video. Oh, really? Yeah, the van's in the video. <laughs> yeah, so I took the photographs for that last summer. And it was an amazing experience to do it. And the fact that that journey around Surrey Heath, the walk, the psychogeographic derive we did as part of an election campaign, got to be the first time. That's has got to be the first time the dream has been yeah. used. Hayley's absolutely <laughs> riveted by the book. Yeah, she's... So that's the full staff over there. So that's where the Duke of Wellington used to sit and plot and plan during the Napoleonic Wars. Queen Charlotte pub. Been there a few times. I really like that pub. And here at the end of Addington Street we have the sea. We're going to be turning away from the sea because we want to go to the, uh, the sites associated with Vincent van Gogh. This is Paragon Street. Crescent leading into Royal Road, and this is the area of Ramsgate associated with Vincent van Gogh or Van Gogh, however you say it. Here, are the uh, ever useful interpretation boards it tells us how Vincent van Gogh came to uh, teach at a school in Royal Road, which is just behind me here. And he actually lived in this square, Spencer Square, at uh, number 11 Spencer Square. And he taught French, German and arithmetic at a boys' boarding school. And here's this really lovely little sculpture of Van Gogh. This drawing here, he did while staying at the, at the school and living in Spencer Square here. 
And it's one of the very few pieces of artwork he did whilst living in England, because of course he lived in Brixton for a while, he also lived in Isleworth in West London. And that is over there. I made a, a little film, I think it was just over about a year and a half ago with Ian Sinclair, where we did Van Gogh's walk from his lodgings in Brixton to where he worked in Covent Garden. And also, more recently, beginning of this year, I visited some of the sites in the city of London that Van Gogh visited, the, the Dutch church, and I think it was the offices of the art dealer that he worked for in London as well. And last year, Tate, I think it was Tate Britain, or Tate Galleries, did a big exhibition of uh, Van Gogh in Britain. Um, and of course, Ramsgate would have featured quite heavily in that. Van Gogh, of course, was a great walker. And he actually walked from Ramsgate back to London. And that's uh, notated in his diaries. And just up here is the house where he lived. And there's number six Royal Road where the school was. And it's from one of those windows above the door there that Van Gogh did the drawing that we just saw in the square behind us. Great view of Ramsgate Harbour from up here. We'll go down there shortly. Once upon a time, Ramsgate was a major port. Not just when the Royal Navy was here during the Napoleonic Wars, but it was a ferry terminal that connected you with, uh, with Belgium. And there was a hovercraft port just around at Pegwell Bay. And stretching back further in time, the Romans landed on the coast just around from here, a couple of miles around near Pegwell Bay. Of course, Richborough Castle, a major Roman fortification, is not very far away. We went round to Pegwell Bay yesterday, the whole family. Uh, this is also significant. Pegwell Bay is where the Saxon mercenaries or Saxon warriors Hengist and Horsa first landed. I think it was in 400 and something, and they established their but the first Anglo-Saxon kingdom here on the Isle of Thanet in East Kent. Okay. Slightly terrifying set of steps here. Can trigger my vertigo. It's a very interesting location down at the bottom of these steps here. This is the Ramsgate Diving Club. This is the Ramsgate Sailors' Church down here, which is a really wonderful place. This is Ramsgate Sailors' Church, built in 1878. Back here. HMS Fervent. This plaque commemorates the men and women of the Allied Coastal Forces who served the Royal Navy at HMS Fervent Ramsgate between 1939 and 1945. From here, motor torpedo boats and motor gun boats and motor launches carried out vital operations against enemy naval forces. Notable boats of Ramsgate, the Starbuck, once HMS Starbuck. So I think this rather kind of nondescript building here was the uh, was the powder store where they kept the munitions for the defensive cannons. And it really is a really glorious, huge harbour. We're walking all the way out to the, uh, the end of the harbour arm there.
gives us a great view back to the town of Ramsgate, looking across the Royal Harbour. are basically out there somewhere and the seas around Britain uh, contain thousands of shipwrecks but there's a lot out on the Goodwin Stands. It's kind of a contested site not only just for the wildlife that inhabit it because they want to dredge it and take it to Dover to build the port um, but also because of the, the shipwrecks that lie underneath. There's been a lot of archaeology going on here recently um, unearthing the shipwrecks and learning about what happened. there was a hovercraft here that's produced one of the best band names I've heard in recent years and there is a band called the Ramsgate Hovercraft. Check them out, they're really good actually. So we've just walked back around the harbour over a little bridge, walking around the edge of the harbour here which is really lovely. And then we're going to go up to a really interesting area called the Plains of Waterloo and then loop back to the, uh, the High Street, the town centre itself. So I'm sure you can imagine Ramsgate played a very big role in the evacuation of the soldiers from Dunkirk in the Second World War. A lot of small ships left this harbour here to make that journey across the channel to bring the soldiers back. This is interesting, these things. So this curious sort of capsule here, this metal capsule, is where um, people could go during air raids. It's a tiny little air raid shelter. So Ramsgate has its own time called Ramsgate Mean Time, which is five minutes faster than this clock. And uh, here is the clock on this clock tower up here. The first strike, the first stroke of this clock at the hour of 12 indicates Greenwich Mean Time. Bit of uh, seaside Ramsgate here. And over there, the Royal Victoria Pavilion, that's the largest JD Weatherspoons pub in the world. Yes, they do exist outside the UK. We're going to go up here, up Kent Place, this little winding alley. One of the other famous residents of Ramsgate is Pugin, the architect of the interior of the Houses of Parliament and Big Ben. The tiles that face these steps here were made by um, local school children at a couple of local uh, secondary schools. The designs are based on the tiles in Pugin's house here, the Grange. Um, the project was funded by the Heritage Lottery Fund, I think. And so they made the tiles and now they face these steps and they're all designed by local school children. Right. This is where Queen Victoria, when she was just Queen, uh, Princess Victoria, used to stay. This is a very grand crescent round here. When I first came to Roundscape, no, just, uh, it was 2009, so it's not that long ago, 11 years ago. This uh, crescent was actually quite run down and dilapidated, but it's all been done up now. And here's the, uh, here's the beach where you can go swimming. The Pleasure Beach. Heidi, uh, how does this uh, compare to Australian beaches? This actually is quite good. It's quite a good um, comparison because it's got the nice sand and the, 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 the blue kind of greeny water. Yeah, it's quite similar. And for our Australian viewers who I know they're not huge in numbers, but they're kind of quite vocal. What were your beaches in Australia? The best beaches in the world! <laughs> <laughs> but you go, what beaches no, were the right. ones you grew up swimming at? Oh, right, OK. Um, so Manly, that's a very manly place. And Balmoral, yeah, that was about it. Yeah. 
This is uh, Wellington Terrace. A number of kind of famous people have stayed here. From heritage information, Wellington Crescent was built early in the 19th century and it was the location of many military installations, both in the Napoleonic Wars and both World Wars. So we're now going along the plains of Waterloo. So this is the house where Karl Marx spent some time. It's debatable how much time he actually spent here. But his daughter, Eleanor Marx, did live in Ramsgate, so... It just says there he stayed here in 1879. This is Waterloo Place. Going along Bellevue Road here. So this is Artillery Road. You see we're looking back down here into a valley. And it was down here that Marx's daughter, Eleanor Marx, lived. This is where it was Jenny Marks, not Eleanor Marks. This is where Jenny Marks lived. Newcastle Hill. This is one of my uh, favourite places in Ramsgate, Michael's Bookshop. It's got a very good topography section in there. Now heading down uh, into the town centre, down towards the high street. That's the Ravensgate Arms, many people's favourite pub in Ramsgate, a very fine pub indeed. They're doing a pop-up at the moment at the, at the boating pool. We were in there last night, it was a great place to have a drink. Outdoors by the boating pool overlooking the sea. Abbots Hill. This is King's Place, and that building up there, which I think is now a Hindu temple, was a little theatre originally. And this is the High Street. If you look up along the High Street, there's some really beautiful buildings along here. Mr. Bino Cafe. This is some beautiful features here. This is a, it's like a junk shop, second-hand furniture place. So this is, uh, this is Andy. I just bumped into you, watches the videos. Andy, what's, what's the thing that you would tell people about Ramsgate? Something I probably missed out. It's, probably, it's, nice, it's a nice little seaside town. Very pleasant. Down by the harbour, it's just lovely. It's just a nice, nice decent town. So. <laughs> it's a good music scene here, isn't it? Yeah, it's good music, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I think we can do some music. Fantastic. Thanks for that, Andy. No Much appreciated. Yeah. How, uh, how lovely to bump into people who watch the videos down here in Ramsgate. That's the second person today. Really lovely. Lovely chap Andy back there. So I think this really is the end of our little, uh, our little Ramsgate walkabout. Guided partly by my sister back there and co-hosted by my wonderful wife, <laughs> Heidi here, who, you know, I wonder if we can cajole her into coming on more walks in the future maybe. Now she's made her, her debut, uh, well, she's actually made her debut before in voice form singing Botany Bay. You remember that little yeah. bit there? So we're just going to head back. We're heading back to London actually today. It's been great. So I hope you enjoyed that little taster of Ramsgate. There's loads of things we've missed out and I'm sure you'll tell us in the comments below. And so, you know, this way you're going to get the real information is down below. But thanks for coming with us on that little Ramsgate walkabout. Thanks to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. And as ever, see you on the next walk, wherever that may be. And look, whoever that may be as well. And after being in Ramsgate, where, did, where were we last? We were in the fields 
uh, on the other side of Epping Forest, the Boudicca's Obelisk, then we were walking through the streets of northwest London to Primrose Hill, now in Ramsgate. Anything now is possible. Who will be joining me? Mm.